Your website is your digital storefront and it is so important you set it up carefully and intentionally so that you can maximize the sales you get. Let's break down how you can do that in this episode. If you paid to rent a storefront downtown in the city you lived in, I know you would spend so much time, so much effort, and also so much money to make sure this store is up to your standards and it is reflective of your brand. And if you think about it, your website is your online digital storefront. So it is the exact same concept. And I think for some reason, people don't take their website as seriously as if they had like real life store. And that's such a mistake and missed opportunity. So let's talk about how you can set up your Shopify store for success. And I'm really going to focus on Shopify because that is a platform that is meant for e-com D2C brands. But if you're starting out and you've decided to do a different platform, that's fine. The same concepts will apply. In my Launch Your Brand course, which takes slow fashion founders all the way from idea to successful full launch and covers everything they need to know. I have an entire module dedicated around your Shopify website and how you build it out. I hired a professional Shopify website builder to walk my clients through it. But what I'm going to do is talk very high level about some strategies that you want to keep in mind. And honestly, I would say that if you are not super tech savvy, you could probably outsource this and get someone else to do it. So it's one less thing on your plate. However, you still need to know the strategy behind it so that you can do it properly. So first and foremost, I want you to think through your user experience. When they land on your website, what do you want their experience to be? What do you want them to go to? What do you want them to take away from your site? How do you want them to feel? It's really similar to if you had a real in-person store as well, right? You also want to think through how you want to nudge them along. So what do you want them to click on? How are they going to purchase? Like you really want to think through that entire journey. And when you're setting up a new site, I highly recommend you draw it out. So just take paper and just sketch out blueprints. Like where do you want certain images? Where do you want certain buttons? Get creative with it. Don't limit yourself. It's really important to think strategically and holistically about your user experience first and foremost. And as you're going through this, for every single web page, you want to think about what's above the fold. So what I mean by that is when you're on a laptop or when you're on a phone there is a point where it's above the fold where like they land on it and they automatically see it so it's essentially anything before they have to scroll and whatever is above the fold just like a newspaper like if it's folded you see like the above the fold part like that's the most important part because if they don't resonate with what's above the fold then they're probably going to leave and they're not going to come back so it's really important you draw them in and so as you're planning this out think out like what the top part of your home page is going to be that is so important. That's the most important in real estate and you want to make sure it resonates with people. Otherwise, they're just going to exit and not come back. So think about the above the fold experience and you also throughout this entire experience of designing, whether you're working with someone else or you're doing it yourself, you want to make sure it looks really good on mobile because nowadays everyone is on websites on their phone from Instagram, from TikTok, whatever. So you want to make sure it looks good. The text needs to be able to, you know, resize so that it's legible. You don't want things to be in wrong places make sure as you're designing your website you like how it looks on your laptop but you also like how it looks on your phone and that is really important I talked a little bit about this already. You want to nudge your customer along the journey when it comes to your website so really make your call to action super obvious like buy now, add to cart, make sure it's super obvious so that they can see it and they're not guessing about what you want them to do. As soon as they have to guess, they're gonna leave and you're not going to get the result you want. And your product pages. So your product pages need to be on point. I have an entire lesson in the Launcher Brand course about it, but high level, you want to make sure your product photography is amazing. It needs to be clear. It needs to be really on brand. And also bonus points if you can have different size models wearing it so that they can potentially envision what it'll look like for them. You want to have all the product details, like you need to answer all the questions, but present this information in a way where it's not overwhelming and they're not like, this is too much, it's information overload and they leave and they don't buy anything. Like it's really important you're strategic with that. And last but not least, once your website is launched, look at your analytics and also your Google analytics. Like there's analytics on Shopify, on Squarespace or whatever platform you decide to use. And then also I would install Google analytics. It's free and you can get that next layer of data because you want to know what pages people are going to, where they're exiting, what buttons people are clicking so that you can optimize and improve your site. Use that data to make data-based decisions. 
And so I hope that these are some good guiding strategies for you. I also have a few tactics I wanted to provide to you as well, just for an SEO perspective. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. So if someone Googles you, you know, like sustainable wedding brand, if that's what you want to do, you want to pop up. So in order to do that, you really need to be strategic about that from the get go. So highly recommend if you don't do that already, rename every single one of your images, like sustainable wedding brand or whatever you want people to type in and see so you literally download the image if it's like jpeg one or whatever click into it rename it on your computer and then upload it and then the other thing too is you want to compress your images so that they're not too big if your file size is too big and the image takes too long to load that's going to hurt your seo and also your users might get frustrated and leave so whatever images you have whether it's a jpeg or a png you can go on like compress png like just search for one or compress jpeg put it in and then it'll compress it it'll make the file size smaller essentially and then for every single page on your site you need to make sure it has a header and an seo description you want to customize that i know it's a pain to do but you do it once and then you're set up and your seo is really really good so these are just some really simple tactics if you hire someone to do your website they'll definitely have more but i just wanted to give those quick tips for you if you're just starting out so that you're set up for success so i hope this episode inspires you to be a little bit more strategic with your website and just remember like this is your online digital storefront so you want to put a lot of effort into it and make sure it's really really good I'm excited to see all of your websites and make sure you check out my how to launch a profitable, sustainable fashion brand masterclass if you haven't already. I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be offering it, so check it out. I talk about what products you should create that people would be dying to get their hands on. I talk about how to source sustainable materials and ethical manufacturers. And last but not least, I talk about how to create an engaged community of customers that will actually buy from you at launch. You can watch it right now, right after this YouTube video or right after you listen to this podcast episode at recloseted.com slash masterclass and the link will be in the show notes for you as well.